Hey guys, so today I'm taking a look at the Sony a7 III and I hate this camera. Not because it's a bad camera, but because it makes all of my other cameras look like garbage. Uh, so we're going to check this out and I'm going to do a comparison to the a6500 uh, just for those of you who are thinking about upgrading or those of you who are maybe just curious about what the differences are in the real world between the a6500 and this a7 III. So let's get started. So here are the two cameras next to each other and immediately what you can tell is how much larger the a7 III is in comparison to the a6500. If you are used to shooting with the compact a6500, it will take some getting used to the larger body. Now, both of these cameras have the kit lenses on them. You can see the 16 to 50 power zoom lens. And then this is the 18 to 70 full frame kit lens, which is also a variable 3.5 to 5.6. A6500 is 564 grams compared to 938 grams with the a7 III. The lenses that you use on the a6500 can be used on the a7 Mark III and vice versa. So as you can tell here, the sensor on the a7 Mark III is significantly larger, I would say almost twice as large as the one on the a6500. So that is a crop sensor versus a full frame sensor. And at the end of the day, that is what you are buying this a7 IV is for that sensor. It's full frame. It's awesome. I'll show you guys some sample videos here shortly. The a7 III shoots up to 10 frames per second versus the a6500's 11 frames per second. Both cameras offer five axis in-body stabilization. So if you're shooting handheld video, it's going to make a little bit of a difference. It'll make your shots a little more stable. It also helps with photos as it takes away some of the blurriness caused by camera shake. Both cameras have Wi-Fi, NFC, and Bluetooth connectivity, as well as a similar color-coded menu system as you can see here. Now there are a lot more options with the a7 III because there are many more settings with this camera, but if you're familiar with the menu of the a6500, it'll be a piece of cake to adjust to the a7 III. So those are some of the similarities. Let's talk about the differences. There are a lot more physical controls. You can see there's a lever here on the front, C2 and C1, which is similar. Uh, you have your mode dial switch. You have an exposure dial here, lever here, autofocus on, AEL, joystick. The record button has been moved up to the corner from this side on the A65. The menu button is over here as well as a C3. Now what you'll notice on this camera is that there is no pop-up flash. The A6500 does have an integrated flash there. As far as connections, the A7 has a bunch of them. So you have a microphone in, you also have a headphone out so you can monitor your audio. You have a micro HDMI, a USB type C so you can charge the camera if you're doing like live streams. And then you also have a multi USB connection here. Compare that to the A6500 where you only have a microphone, a USB and a micro HDMI. The screen on the back of the A7 III is larger than that on the A6500. However, it's the same resolution. One of the biggest additions to the A7 III is the addition of dual card slots which allow you to shoot simultaneous videos on two slots, which is especially useful if you're using the camera for wedding photography and you don't want to lose any of your photos or videos. Finally, the a7 also includes Sony's new Z series battery, which is about twice as large and has over twice the capacity of the FW50 battery, which is included with the a6500. So the benefit of this is you can use the camera almost all day without having to worry about swapping out batteries every couple of hours. Another huge feature of the a7 III is the autofocus points. You get a whopping 693 autofocus points, whereas you have 425 with the a6500. Even the shutter speed is improved on the a7 III as it could go as fast as 1 over 8,000 versus 1 over 4,000 on the a6500. Now, as far as video, both cameras are capable of doing 4K at up to 30 frames per second and 100 megabits per second and full HD up to 120 frames per second. There are a couple of small differences though. 
So the A7 Mark III actually has a 1.2 times crop when recording at 30 frames per second in 4K, whereas the A6500 has no crop. What that means in simple terms is that you're going from a 6K image down to 4K with the A6500, and you're going from a 5K image down to 4K with the A7, at least when you're shooting it at 30 frames per second. Now at 24 frames per second, both cameras will shoot 4K with no crop. All right, so I have been using both of these cameras side by side for the last couple of days, so these are my conclusions. Now, what I'm gonna do is start by talking a little bit more about just full-frame Sony cameras in general. I've never been a huge fan of full-frame Sonys, at least not the older models, because when the A7 came out, A7 II, A7S, A7S II, none of them really had a great autofocusing system. That was always the big selling point when it came to the A6000, A6300, and A6500. That simply is not the case anymore with the A7 III, as this autofocus system is even better than that on the A6500. Now what's important to establish is that the A6500 is a great camera to begin with. It's awesome. The A6000 is a great camera. This thing is pretty amazing. If you watch some comparisons between the A6500 and other cameras in the price range, this thing is impressive, especially in video mode, especially when you're talking about 4K footage. So when I took this camera and I put my favorite Sony 35mm lens on it, and then I did some side-by-side -side shots with the Sony a7 III with a cheapo 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, that is the SEL 50 f1.8f, this is what I saw. So it didn't matter if I was just shooting the cameras in aperture priority, in auto settings, or I was matching the settings from both cameras, it is very clear to see that the image coming out of the a7 III is much sharper and much more clear than that coming from the a6500. And these are just normal photographs. If you look at landscapes, the same thing happens. Stopping down each of the lenses to f5.6, you can see that the a7 has much greater detail. You can see that the dark areas are darker, there's more uh, contrast, and in general, the image looks nicer. When you are shooting portraits in low light, the difference is even greater as the a7 III just walks away from the a6500. And again, to reiterate, I'm using a great lens, my favorite lens on the Sony a6500, and comparing it to a $160 used lens that I picked up for the Sony a7 III. So after looking at those side-by-side -side images, I went online and did some more research, and I found that according to DxOMark, the sensor on the a7 III was rated even higher than that on the a9, which is a $4,500 Sony camera. Now when you compare this sensor score to the sensor score on the a6500, it's a significant difference, and where you see the biggest difference is when it comes to low light and sports photography, in which the a7 III is really in a class of its own. So this got me thinking, what would happen if I used the exact same lens on both the a6500 and this a7 III? So what I did was, I took my Zeiss 24, which is a $1,000 lens, I used it on my a6500, and then I mounted the same lens to the a7 III, and then I shot a picture in crop mode, which is very easy to get to. In fact, I programmed one of these top buttons to just switch from full frame to crop. And as you can clearly tell, the a7 III image is still much more clear. And what is very interesting is that the colors look nicer, at least in my eyes. So Sony did an amazing job with the sensor on the a7 III. I was not expecting that at all, and it does not disappoint. So let's take a look at some sample photos and videos from the a7 III, and most of these are gonna be done with the cheapo 50 millimeter f1.8 prime lens for full frame cameras. I'm relying on your love and can you let me soon So that if I'm left with nothing at the bottom you can be the one to come and help me up You're the one that got responding to the calling When my heart is 
this heavy, you I should get to hold tight Hard to belly all the good in the cold times So keep me warm before the freeze of the night grows Body hit the more degrees if we lie close I know you know I got needs and you solve them Through it all, you'll be there pulling for me, yeah And when I'm caught up all deep in my problems You of all people care, someone not need If I'm running thin on my luck and falling so So that is it for the sample photos and videos. This thing is an amazing camera and I wish it wasn't so amazing because then I would not want one. Now, if you guys are looking online, these things are back ordered Amazon. You have to wait about one to two months. B&H is about one month back ordered on these camera bodies just because of how popular they are. I think that there are going to be a lot of Canon and Nikon users and maybe even some Fuji users that are going to make the switch to the a7 III just because it's a very capable all around camera. You can use it for sports photography, wedding photography, low light, it's great at video. It really is as impressive and well worth the hype that it's receiving online. Now, if I were to go on another trip, I would most likely miss the smaller compact form factor of the a6500. So I would lean more towards taking that with me versus something as big and as heavy as this full frame camera. Like I said before, the other full frame Sony cameras never really appealed to me, but the fact that this thing is their entry level and budget camera, it has everything that the a6500 has and then some and they're offering it at $2,000, which is a lot of money, but when you look at the a6500 at $1,400, it's $600 more, you're getting full frame, you're getting a bigger battery, you're getting a much better sensor, better low light performance. There are a lot of reasons you can use to justify switching to a full frame a7 III. Now, that being said, I do not think that APS-C is dead. I know that some people on YouTube are already saying, this is the APS-C killer. That's just dumb. Uh, I think that people like the small form factor of the a6500, the a6000 that I have here, which I still use almost on a daily basis. These are great cameras, they're compact, and they still are better than so many other larger cameras out there. But if you are in the market for a brand new camera and you have the budget for it, definitely check this thing out. Uh, you probably will be just as impressed as I have been using it over the last couple of days. Uh, shout out to my buddy Drive-By Reviews, um, who also has a YouTube channel for letting me borrow this camera and review it and take all of these crazy pictures with it. I'm using the Sony a6500 with the 35 millimeter lens, and now I'm switching over to the a7 with the 50 millimeter lens. Here is the image that you get with the a7 Mark III with the 50 millimeter cheap prime lens. So as you could probably tell, I really like this camera and I am going to buy one for myself eventually. I don't know how long I'll have to wait because it's back ordered, but I will probably buy one and not even replace my a6500, but just use it for these shots right here. Um, for the channel. If you guys are in the market for a new camera and you're thinking about a6500 versus a7 III, I'd encourage you to check out both, but uh, I would steer you more towards the a7 III because I feel like it's a lot more future-proof. Uh, it's a camera that you could probably buy and use for the next three years, four years, um, without really having to upgrade because it really has everything that you would ever want in a camera. Uh, so that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you guys are interested in checking out more specs and features and fun stuff about this thing, I will post links down below to Amazon and B&H, so check those out. 
Uh, by using those links, you do help support the channel. So thank you guys so much. As always, thank you guys for all of your likes, comments, and support. And don't worry, I'm not leaving APS-C. I don't think it's dead. I'm gonna keep my A6000 and A6500 probably for a long time. Uh, and continue making lens reviews. But this full frame will open up a whole new world and maybe a whole bunch of other full frame lenses. Uh, so you guys will enjoy more content as a result. Uh, anyway, that is going to be it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.